name is Pitt Schneider. Um, I'm a data scientist at the National Library of Luxembourg. And together with the team, I'm implementing uh, the project that I will present to you uh, right now, uh, which is about uh, artificial intelligence, of course. Um, so it all starts with uh, our platform uh, aiming to, to show uh, historic newspapers, uh, mainly in uh, German, French, uh, and Luxembourgish. Next to the newspaper scan, you're also provided with the, the OCR uh, output uh, on the left. And as you can see, this is um, in general of mixed quality. In this case, it turns out to be really bad. Um, so this really uh, motivated us to, uh, to start this project. And the first big task is to uh, improve this OCR using AI techniques. Um, one step further, um, once we hopefully have uh, better uh, clean text data, we want to improve the way that uh, our users can uh, discover the newspapers. Um, so let me show you uh, where we ideally want to end up in early next uh, year. So this is only one uh, screenshot of a draft interface, um, mainly focusing on uh, named entities. So what's most important in, in the newspaper uh, articles. Um, also, we want to model the relations between those uh, entities, uh, incorporate uh, interactive components such as a timeline, as you can see on the bottom of the screen, a map to visualize um, locations and bring in uh, uh, contextual data from uh, wiki data. Um, so this is where we want to end up ideally uh, next year. Um, so let me tell you about what we did first in this project, which is uh, which was to generate a ground proof uh, data set. Uh, so this is around 100,000 100, uh, text lines um, with the perfectly matching uh, text. Um, so 100,000 uh, pairs. And this really is, of course, only a small fraction of the entire uh, collection. Um, so once we have uh, trained the models, we naturally want to apply this in an automatic way uh, on, on the rest of the, the corpus. And that's why we have developed this uh, chain or pipeline that you can see right now, um, uh, a sequence of processes where every uh, other uh, text block, uh, I will talk a lot about text blocks in the following, uh, has to go true. Um, so let me cover uh, most of those uh, processes in that chain in the following. Um, all right, so first is uh, the quality. Uh, so what we want to start the pipeline with is to uh, evaluate the, the quality, the OCR quality uh, in an automatic uh, way without having uh, ground proof available, uh, of course. Uh, so uh, how we approach this is by uh, making use of our ground proof, um, calculating some uh, metrics for every text block in that uh, ground proof. And you can see every um, text block in this 3D cube uh, in it, labeled. Uh, so green is uh, sufficient OCR quality. Uh, in, in this case, uh, it's 95% or above uh, regarding edit distance uh, or red, which is insufficient. Um, and the idea is that we can also calculate those values, uh, which are, for example, dict, the dictionary value. How many words can you find in, in a dictionary that you can calculate those values also for any other text block, which is not part of this ground proof set. Um, so other, other metrics are trigram. Uh, so uh, we, we compare uh, the trigrams of the, of the text block to the um, popular trigrams in the language. And also we look for uh, garbage strings. And this is, this is the way we position those um, text blocks in this cube. And we apply the Canon uh, algorithm um, and we see decent uh, accuracy uh, using this uh, approach. So for those textbooks that uh, have insufficient quality, we continue uh, with the chain. Uh, for the others, uh, we stop right there. We do not touch them because this is unnecessary overhead. Um, so let's jump right away to the segmentation. Um, the idea is here is to uh, extract individual text lines. Uh, why do we need that? Well. Uh, later on in the chain, we uh, use modern OCR uh, engines, which work on a text uh, line level. Um, so to extract text lines, we combine uh, essentially two, two techniques. Of the first one is the upper left image. Uh, um, this image is, image is generated using some morphology operations um, so that it hopefully indicates text areas, so the black components uh, in the image. Um, and hopefully every black component is indeed representing uh, one text line. 
Um, but to improve uh, the accuracy, uh, we add a horizontal uh, histogram uh, projection, uh, which means in every uh, row of the image, we count the number of uh, black pixels, um, or the amount of text uh, in general, uh, which determines the width of the, the black bars that you can see. Um, so we, we combine both um, methods to, uh, um, to extract text lines and we see pretty accurate results uh, here. And also what was really important for us um, <clears throat> for this implementation is that it's quite uh, fast. We wanna be computational, uh, computationally uh, efficient since we know that we have to apply this to uh, many uh, text blocks. So next in the pipeline is uh, font recognition. So we have a binarized segmented uh, uh, image now. Um, what we don't want to do here is, uh, in a binary way, uh, distinguish between uh, two font clusters. Uh, uh, the, the major one being uh, the Fraktur font class, so in uh, the a typeface used in German-speaking uh, countries. Uh, why Fraktur? Well, uh, first of all, we have a lot of uh, Fraktur data, and second, um, we think that it's visually quite different from from the rest of the fonts. So. We distinguish between factor and everything else, which we just call a uh, regular here. And this is a conventional uh, neural network, which we train on uh, individual characters, which need again, uh, we need to be segmented again, down from the line level to the individual character level. Um, and this network is trained using uh, TensorFlow. So once the uh, binarized uh, segmented image comes in, uh, the network compares it to the characters and spits out one of the, the classes, which works uh, really well uh, in our case. All right, so next is probably the, the most crucial uh, part of, of this pipeline, uh, which is the recognition uh, step, the character recognition step. And uh, as I mentioned before, we focus on uh, open source uh, software. Um, in our current implementation, we, we are using uh, Kraken. Um, why Kraken? Well, uh, we thought it was quite uh, easy to use and it gives us uh, next to the uh, the recognition of the characters also uh, the geomet geometrical uh, information about where to to find the characters inside uh, the image and that's what we want to have um, also I should mention that uh, all of those three libraries um, and many others uh, they allow custom model training which was really important uh, for us uh, since uh, we have this ground truth data available now and we can bring in our own data, train our custom model. Uh, we can even separate it now since we, we know how to distinguish between the two font classes, retain a small testing set and train our own models. And this, um, uh, we tested this gives us an, a small a small edge of our uh, models that are available uh, out there to be used uh, out of the box. All right, uh, so next, this was it for the, the OCR part, um, uh, a small slide uh, on named entities. Uh, so hopefully we now have improved uh, OCR um, to now discover what's most important, the, the named entities. Uh, we again needed training data. Um, we did that uh, in a house uh, this time, annotating around 35,000 entities so far. Um, this data is used to, to train language models using uh, SPACI, uh, which is a, a popular NLP uh, library. Um, so yes, we uh, uh, input in improved OCR and hopefully SPACI is able to output the, the named entity types, location, person, organization, and uh, date. Um, all right. Let me finish this uh, presentation by telling you uh, where we currently uh, stand, uh, what's the progress of the, the, the project, uh, given those two uh, subtasks. So first, um, concerning OCR, um, we implemented this chain uh, I showed you. Um, we tested it, um, and this gives us an estimate that we can improve around 30% of, uh, of all of our text blocks in our collection, um, so around or one uh, two thirds two thirds will stay untouched um, probably, and among the the, the remaining third, uh, nearly all of them they will be improved uh, through this uh, chain, and this will all be applied to the production data in the coming weeks weeks, which is uh, pretty exciting I think. Um, 
for the exploration uh, part, uh, we finished uh, annotating uh, the, the entities. So we, we generated our own ground proof. We trained the first models uh, and we're just about to see the first results. So it's a bit too early to share uh, results here. But uh, in parallel, we have been uh, already working on the new interface. I showed you uh, one a screenshot of, uh, which aims to um, show the, the named entities and incorporate those interactive components, such as a timeline and a map, for example. And a last bullet um, I want to finish with is that we uh, uh, we intend to uh, publish our data with the community. So uh, the training data, as well as the trained models, uh, once the project is uh, complete. That's it from my side. Thank you very much for listening.